In terms of the severity of this lockdown, we know from the case in New Zealand that a short, a sharp lockdown does in fact work. So could that not be the best case scenario in terms of giving certainty to the Victorian economy rather than sort of leaving it semi-open and risking clusters emerging? And we know how, how fast these new infections and clusters of infections can take place and spread. I think the concern here is that this is our second lockdown uh, in Victoria. We've gone through this now since mid-March. We've uh, been in various stages of lockdown and then we had a slight a, a reopening, which wasn't a full reopening, and now we're back into total lockdown. And I think the, the what we would call here the stop-start um, nature of, of reopening is really impacting on business confidence and business sentiment. So what we were, what we are saying is that we have to find ways to adapt and to live with this. Um, it is not going to go away anytime soon, unfortunately, but there have to be alternatives, more nuanced, more localised, um, you know, alternatives to uh, shutting down entire cities or entire states. Um, that is just going to cause us mass massive economic damage. What are you hoping that the government will do in order to support businesses? Well, there's a lot that needs to be done um, to support businesses of various sizes. You talked earlier around tourism, for instance. That sector has been completely uh, smashed by what's occurred here. Um, so that is going to need support. Um, the aviation industry is obviously in trouble, rest in trouble. All the public-facing businesses are, uh, are doing it very tough at the moment. Retail is a sector which is... Uh, seeing a lot of closures occur. So what, what is going to be required is both short and long-term assistance from government. The government, of course, has its JobKeeper program. Uh, now, how that is continued, in what form it can't continue for every business, obviously it's economically unsustainable, but there has to be targeted support for businesses and there needs to be targeted support too for employees to keep them engaged with workplaces. We fear uh, that there will be a second economic wave, which will be a longer, slower, rolling wave, which will come across the economy later this year, impacting on sectors such as construction and parts of manufacturing, parts of the economy that have largely got through unscathed so far. And that's what we're keeping an eye on. And that's where we think the next danger zone will be. Interesting you say that because so far the macroeconomic picture for Australia as compared to other countries around the world has looked better. We've seen a faster recovery in the Australian economy and yet it seems wages still remain pretty bleak. I wonder what you've heard from your members when it comes to jobs and wage plans. Well, there's a lot of just hanging on at the moment that's occurring. I mean, some sectors are doing quite well obviously if you look at an area like food manufacturing which is a quarter of manufacturing in australia it's doing well because of the circumstances we're in but other parts of of industry aren't doing well so it's a mixed and varied picture and the issue that we're looking at and our members are looking at is that um is the pipelines that would have been filled of for work for later this year that would have been being filled in sort of that first quarter or or second quarter of this year this hasn't occurred so that's when you're going to get the sort of the secondary impacts occurring across the economy wages have have remained um, wage growth has remained relatively suppressed so there's a range of factors for that we have low inflation uh, and low productivity growth and you put those together and in the current inv uncertain environment there is not likely to be much significant wage growth for a long time to come how important is it then that we get some, uh, some, some clarity on the future of JobKeeper, particularly as to the degree of uncertainty over a number of the industries and sectors that you represent, including aviation? Well, I think JobKeeper, um, or the decision that the government makes around JobKeeper, will be undoubtedly the most significant economic decision that it makes during this term of government. Uh, how it decides to continue or retain JobKeeper in what form it does, because it almost certainly will have to, um, is going to be very important and business will pick up that signal very quickly. Of course, the government is going to make an announcement on that um, in the next week or so. Um, but business will pick up on that because of us, it's of just hanging on going on in the business community and JobKeeper has kept a lot of people connected to their employer. Um, but business
businesses will then have until the end of September to make some decisions around their business models. So it's important that we get clarity as quickly as possible and it's also important that we get um, you know, businesses being advised and being, giving some, being given some certainty around things like cash flow and the like so that they can make decisions around what steps they'll take to survive, uh, to merge, to, to grow. I think the next three months are going to be crucial to how Australia recovers from, uh, from the economic situation that we face.